So the third scenario to discuss today. How will we compete in the future with each other and with um, robots? Well, biotechnology uh, has been linked very closely to, of course, the medical field. And the way we think about, have thought about medicine is in terms of treatment uh, of a disease. But we're moving to a point with, uh, with biomedical technologies where there are drugs that, keep us, that can keep us alert longer, allow us to perform our work better, allow us to, um, to manage and harness uh, larger amounts of, of information, uh, to even run faster uh, and uh, to hear at different frequencies, and even, of course, as you may know, um, perform certain kinds of cell, cellular regeneration and potentially achieve greater uh, life expectancy and longevity. So biotechnology, in other words, is no longer really just about therapy, is it? It's become really about enhancement, integrating technology within ourselves such that you know, people more routinely use the word cyborg, even though we don't really have uh, lots of you know, man-machine cyborgs running around yet. But here's a scenario to contemplate, and we'll present several. The scenario by which we undergo really a philosophical shift, and again in the definition of health and medicine from prevention and treatment towards actually elective enhancement because technology uh, makes this uh, possible. Uh, you may have seen this particular TED talk on a stage um, uh, at, uh, at Long Beach, California. Professor Anthony Atala from Wake Forest University uh, printed out a human kidney on stage. Uh, in his lab at Wake Forest, they've transplanted bladders, trachea, uh, muscles, blood vessels, and so forth. These are all uh, now becoming off-the-shelf human organs. And in, uh, it was actually already five or six years ago where they implanted the first um, uh, th sort of uh, printed uh, artificial human bladder. So new, where, you know, where does it stop? New kidneys, ears, fingers, bones, uh, uh, quite a few different uh, uh, body parts really are being developed uh, here at the Center for Regenerative Medicine. So let's take the scenario now yet one step further. Uh, who is going to win or benefit uh, in this global market for human enhancement? And here you have to think about things from the geotechnology uh, standpoint. Uh, historically, of course, the West uh, uh, you know, has led the world in terms of biotechnology innovation and drug development and, uh, and deployment and, and commercialization. And that may still be the case. But when it comes to the R&D environment, uh, we know that you know, in, in the United States, when it comes to commercialization, it takes on average 10 years and $1 billion to bring a drug uh, towards uh, the phase of, of human trials. Uh, it could be a lot faster and a lot cheaper in Asian countries uh, with different regulatory environments. And that's often referred to here as a more pragmatic approach, quote unquote, to, uh, to dealing with this, this kind of uh, R&D. Now, be that as it may, a different regulatory environment could mean, again, very rapid commercialization and really tip the balance of commercial power in terms of the development of uh, certain drugs and treatments and enhancements um, in Asia. 